Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson in surveying. By the way, to those who are new in my channel, I am Engineer J, I I am a civil engineer and I am also currently teaching as an engineering professor and in this video, we will talk about one of the fundamental topic in surveying. We have here leveling. So by the way, what is leveling and where and when we should use leveling in the real world situation? Okay, so leveling, this is defined as an art of determining the relative height of different points on, above, or below the surface. Or it is the process of directly or indirectly measuring vertical distances to determine the elevation of points or their differences in elevation. So in short, leveling is conducted if you want to determine the elevations of points on the ground or if you want to determine the difference and elevation between two or more points. So when we use leveling in the real world situation, now leveling is used by a surveyor or civil engineer in designing highways, okay, in designing drainage system so that we will be able to know the amount of excavations, the amount of embankments, okay, so that we will be able to know, of course, where is the highest point and the lowest point on the ground para alam natin where we should put the manhole so that we would be also know of course where is the flood prone areas and so on so that's the purpose of leveling so as a whole leveling is used to determine the physical characteristics of a ground okay again to know where is the highest and the lowest point so, in conducting leveling, we use um, different instrument and equipment. But the important equipment that we need here in conducting leveling is the telescope. Now, which is we have here transit, which is the obsolete um, type of instrument that we use in leveling since all the measurements here are read manually. Okay? And theodolite here this is more advanced than transit because this is digitally all or all the measurement here are shown digitally. Okay? But we have the latest one, we have the total station in which it involves laser technology, in which we don't need to use um, tape measure to measure horizontal distances. By using its laser um, features, we can actually um, determine the distances between two points or three or more okay that that is the advantage of total station amongst this instrument but we also have auto leveling but the only difference is that um, in auto level this telescope here can't be tilted so it is fixed okay so once you um, level the entire instrument so the telescope will be automatically leveled as well okay unlike um unlike this instrument here transit to the total station you just you still need to level the telescope we have uh, bubbles here above as features to know if our instrument is already leveled okay now one of uh, needed instrument in conducting leveling is stadia or the leveling rod now, this is just a huge ruler which is um, held or positioned vertically. This being sighted by the surveyor to determine the, the height from the ground. Okay, so again, this is positioned vertically. Of course, we have the tape measure if you want to know the horizontal distances. Okay, between two between points. Then we have tripod in which where we place our instrument. Then we have the plumb bob and the stake. Okay, plumb bob. This is of course to ensure that our um, equipment or our theodolite is vertically aligned with the stake or with the points beneath the the equipment. Okay, that's the purpose of plumb bob. And then we have the stakes, of course, to um, as a marker. Okay as a marker to know where is the location of our stations okay of course we have the compass to know the bearings or the angle and then in conducting leveling you may encounter important keywords important terms 
that are very useful okay so we have of course elevation we already know what is elevation elevation this is the vertical distance above or below the mean sea level or any selected datum but usually we use mean sea level here as our reference point of the vertical distance so just like this one we have the elevation of A above mean sea level or that is the vertical distance from point A to the mean sea level mean sea level is the average height between high tide and the low tide okay and we have here the elevation of point B above the mean sea level but we can also use any point on the ground as our datum so if we set point A here as our datum so we can say that point elevation of point B above point A or basically it is just the difference in elevation between point B and point A okay that's that's how you um, define elevation and we also have benchmark benchmark is the relatively permanent point of known elevation so in conducting leveling you should have a point in which elevation is known already okay that is what we call the benchmark so for example if this is our study rad so point a here can be our benchmark or permanent point with known elevation so point a here should have um, known elevation but if we do not know its exact ele elevation above mean sea level so we can just assume if we are just trying to know the difference in elevation between two points but if you want to know the exact elevation of all the points on the ground then you have to know first the elevation of your benchmark or the exact elevation of your benchmark relative to the mean sea level okay now we have back site here back site this site taken to the level rod study rod held at a point of known elevation either a bm or tp tp here this is a this is a turning point okay so since we already know the elevation of our benchmark they can then we can take a backside reading okay that's the backside you can take a backside to a point with known elevation take note of that so again this is our study rad okay this is our instrument or um, surveyor should cite okay or should read this reading here now in conducting leveling so you have to make sure that your telescope here should be horizontally positioned that means that our bubble here on the telescope is on the center okay and that's how you ensure that we have leveled our telescope and of course you have to make sure that our instrument is of course leveled as well so we can actually or we can make sure that our equipment is um, horizontally or is level by looking at the bubbles on the equipment if our bubbles is on the center that's when we can say then that our equipment is already leveled okay so you take a backside reading at our point a okay where our study rod is located okay you just read the um, the measuring device this one here so we have numbers this in terms of meters or in feet so it depends on the type of rod that you are using once you take the box height reading then you can compute for the height of the instrument height of the instrument this is the elevation of the line of sight of the telescope that means that it's the height of our telescope from the mean sea level that is the hi or the height of the instrument so we can compute hi here by just adding the elevation of point a and the back side reading that is the total height of the instrument okay then after that we take a four side reading for sight reading this is a site taken on any point to determine its elevation since we do not know yet the elevation of our point b then we take a four side reading okay so we read we just um turn the telescope to the other side and take a back four side reading then we read we place our study rod at point b okay so we compute the elevation at point b by just um 
computing the difference between the height of the instrument and the foresight reading. Okay? That is the elevation at point B. So now let's try to solve um, some problems in differential leveling. Now we have here, determine the difference in elevation between point A and point B. So if this is our point A, this one, and if this is our point B, so we compute the difference in elevation by first um, setting our study rod on our benchmark 1. Now, since we set A here as our benchmark 1, so we place our study rod at that point. Okay? Then we assume the elevation of point A. If we do not know the exact elevation of point A above the, uh, above the mean sea level, then that's the time that we assume the elevation. But in this case, we assume 20 meters as the elevation of A. So we install the instrument. Okay, then we make sure that this is leveled. Okay, we make sure that all the bubbles above the telescope, above the instrument, are on the center. Okay, so we take a backside reading. But in this case, for example, we take 3.851 meters as our backside reading. So you... Um, Write it in our table. Okay, our table, by the way, has um, the point column, the backside reading, the height of the instrument, the foresight readings, and the elevation. So you write the backside reading at station A or point A at benchmark 1, and we recorded here 3.851. So in that case, we can now compute the height of the instrument again by just summing up the elevation at station A or point A and the backside reading. So we have 20 plus 3.851, then we have 23.851. Then after we compute for the height of the instrument, then we transfer our study rod to the next station. Okay, so we set that as our turning point 1. Okay, we transfer the study rod. But if B is visible from the location of our instrument, pwede ka nang hindi mag turning point 1. You can transfer the study rod directly to station B. But in the case that our last point is not visible from our initial position, then you have to have a series of turning points in between A and B. Okay? So that is the rule so so we assume that point b here is not visible from the initial position of our equipment so we assigned a turning point okay we again place our study rod at that point then we read the foresight reading again you can read foresight reading to a point without elevation or the elevation has not been computed yet Okay, so in that case, we read 0.948 meter as our foresight reading. So in, on the turning point one row, so we write here the foresight reading. So we have 0.948. Then we can now compute the elevation of our turning point one. Again, by just um, computing the difference between the height of the instrument, which is 23.851, and the foresight reading, which is 0.948. So you subtract 0.948 from 23.851. This would give us 22.903. So that is our, or that is the elevation of our turning point one. Okay, so we write here on the turning point one row. Then after that, you transfer the instrument, okay, at this point. So you read the backside data or the backside reading. Again, why backside reading? Since you already know the elevation of this station here. Okay, so in this case, we read 3.320. So we write this on our table. So we have 
the backside reading on turning point 1 is 3.320. Since we transfer the instrument to a new point, then we have a new height of the instrument, correct? So in that case, we can compute our new HI by just adding the elevation of turning point 1 and the backside reading. So in that case, we have 22.903 plus the backside reading which is 3.320. Okay, that's the height from line of sight to the, to the ground at the turning point 1. Okay, so in that case, we write 26.223 here. So we have 26.223. Okay, then we can move our study rod to the next point if point B is, na, is still not visible from this position. Okay, so again, if point B is not yet visible from the position of our equipment, then we set a new turning point and we say that as turning point 2. Okay, we move the study rod at that point. And then we record the foresight reading. So in turning point 2, we write the foresight re reading 0 0.780. Then we can now compute the elevation of turning point 2 by just um, get by just subtracting the foresight reading from the height of our instrument, which is 26.223 minus 0 0.780. This equals to 25.443, and that is the elevation of our turning point 2. Okay, then again, we move the instrument to the opposite side. We have here, then we read the backside reading. Again, we read backside reading because we already know the elevation of turning point 2 and we recorded 2.972. Okay, then we can now compute the new height of the instrument in which we just add the elevation of turning point 2 okay this one plus the backside reading which is 2.972 and this would give us 28.415 then if b is now visible from our um, equipment then we may not uh, add another turning point so we can transfer the study rod directly to point b which is our benchmark 2 then we read the for site reading okay so we can now compute the difference or uh, we can now compute the elevation of point b here by just again subtracting 0.945 from the um, hi which is 28.415 so 28.415 minus 0.945 this would give us 27.470 Okay, so we have now the elevation at point B, which is 27.470. Since our goal here is to determine the difference in elevation between point A and point B, subtract the elevation at point B, which is 27.470, this one, and the elevation at point A, which is our benchmark 1, which is 20 meter, then we can say that the height of B from A is 7.47 meters okay that is the elevation of b relative to point a or relative to our benchmark one okay so the answer here is 7.470 and that ends the discussion on the differential leveling so in my next video we will try to um, discuss about other type of leveling which is profile leveling thank you guys for listening and i hope that you have learned something thank you guys and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel have a great day and stay safe